Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Kelly's back with us today with some more good word. You're going to like it. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you, Mother. You're sweet and kind to let me come talk. You're a good girl. Well, I, I just got through saying to you to jump in with anything because okay. we all, I will. if I could poke you and just let it Turn come out, on. everybody would love it. So I, I, I poke you. I poke you. I, I'm like a jukebox. <laughs> you have to put it. Uh, quarter in. No, I'm not. I'm ready. <laughs> you are always ready and you're always filled with the Word. And so to help us all be that way, we're going to go to the Word we're in John 13. And we left off yesterday talking about Jesus was washing their feet and Peter was like, no, wait, what are you doing? And so what he was doing is preparing his disciples. And he says several times in this exchange and on through the next course of however many days it was until he went to the cross, he was telling them things are about to change. I'm going to be leaving. I'm going to be sending you another comforter. He was telling them what was going to happen, but they weren't listening. So when it came down to it and it actually happened in the garden, they were unprepared. But he had prayed for them that their faith, faith wouldn't fail. Not. He told Peter, your faith, I've prayed for you. Your faith will not fail. And you know what? It didn't. One failure, two failures, three failures, however many failures you can have does not constitute failure in his eyes. He says, you're going to make it. And he says to us, That's you're right. going to make it. That's right. And he's given us everything that we need to more than make it. Not just make it in our personal lives, but he's equipped us, according to Ephesians 13, uh, Ephesians, there's not an Ephesians 13, Ephesians 3, he's equipped us to be able to impact the body. He's equipped us to have impact. And so to in these days, job. yeah, and he's equipped us and equipping us in these days for these days and for what's ahead. But we want to be, we want to learn from the disciples sort of hear what not to do, or better said is what attitude not to have, so that we can walk out what the changes that are coming in the body, the changes that are coming in the times that we live in. I believe that we're in the last days, but as my mom has always said, it's our last days either way. So That's we need right. to live like That's that. Exactly right. But I believe that we're approaching that time when things are coming together. Praise There's God. a unity in the body right now that is so exciting. But I don't want to be in the flow working against what Jesus is doing. No. I want to be in the flow with him. Easily moved. I'm easily in. persuaded. That's what I love about Peter is he's easily persuaded by Jesus. And he says, you're not washing my feet. And Jesus says, look, if I don't wash you, you're not, you don't belong to me. And Peter's like, wash it all, Lord, wash That's it all. Right. That's right. <laughs> so he's all in when he sees what Jesus is saying. It just took him some time to capture what Jesus was saying because he wasn't listening, because he thought he knew. And that's an easy place to slip into where we think we know what Jesus is doing or we have a sense that we understand what he's doing because we view it with our own eyes. And he's saying, listen to me. View it through my eyes. Even where the sinner, people that don't know him, we need to be viewing them through his eyes, not through our own eyes. What The problem with viewing people through your own eyes is they don't know what you know. And maybe there's more that you need to know, but maybe there's more they need to know. But if they don't know what you know, how are they going to know what you know about Could Jesus? Could you repeat that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> okay. I'm if they kidding. don't know what we know, I've always said, you only know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. This you can't true. know what you don't know unless you find it out, That's right? right. Okay. So you only operate in what you know unless you know Jesus. I may be getting confusing now, but I'll try to undo myself. If, if, if we look at people and judge them through what we know, we can't do that because they don't know what we know. But if we judge them... We separate them, not only from the love of Jesus that's in us, we separate them from what we know when we judge them. Well, actually, we're not supposed to judge. That's right. Judge not that you be not judged. That's right. Because they need to know. And if you keep what, if you keep good things in you from someone else, 
then good things are going to be hidden from you. It's really a serious thing judging somebody. So we all, in all of these things, in the days that That's we're in especially, we walk in love you and it allows us to have the compassion of Jesus That's right. and to see people the way he does. But that he, everything, we need to see everything through his eyes. So here in uh, John 13, 31, I'm reading out of the New Living, Jesus is really working with the disciples to get them on the same page. And it says, he t he's t talking to them about what's happening. And he says, the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of the Son, he will give glory to the Son. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I'm going. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. So Jesus is preparing them to be without him in the physical. So I believe this is really an important thing for us to see is that the love that we have for each other, and it talks about this in Ephesians, it talks about experiencing his love. The love of God should not just be words, on a, words in a book, words on paper that we read, God loves you. The love of God should come among us. I, it, you should experience the love of God because you know me, because I love you and I love you with his love. So he says, I'm leaving, so I'm going to help you and I'm going to give you a new commandment. You need to love each other. Not just love, but real love, my love. You use my love on each other. What's he saying? This is going to help you be without my physical presence is because my presence is going to be present in you in and among you. Isn't that good? That is excellent. The, the ver this chapter 13 starts by saying Jesus loved them from the beginning and during his ministry and he would love them to the very end. Us loving each other is part of Jesus loving us to the very end of eternity. We will be expressing his love to each other until the day we see him face to face and he's expressing his love face to face in the physical form. But we are supposed to express that and love each other. That's so important in these last days. It's always been important. But God is saying, get busy people <laughs> and love each other. He says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples. What is proof but fruit? How is, this, how is our love going to prove to the world that um, we are followers of him? It's because when, we, when they see the love in and among us, they're actually going to be seeing Jesus. Jesus prayed this in John 17. He said, when you're one, when you love each other and when you are united in me, they are going to know. It doesn't say they're going to know you love the people, the world. It doesn't say the world is going to know you love them. It says the world is going to know that I love them when? When we're united, when we are loving each other, they're going to see Jesus. Isn't that good? That may feel like a load of responsibility on our shoulders, but that's okay. It's, it, we have him in us to do that with. The love of God has been love shed abroad in our hearts. So it's there. It's there. We just have to let it go. We have to shed choose. It. We, we have to we choose. Have to shed the, it. That's the kicker it's I didn't been tell you about. <laughs> and we shed it. That's all right. It's not that hard. In fact, love is the only way to live and it never fails. And love forgives. So if it somebody does. does you wrong, you don't have to be concerned about it. You don't have to get sick over it. You can just forgive Let and it it's go. all gone away. Yeah. And you're good. Mm -hmm. Amen. God will deliver you. That's he right. will help you. And you love, you put him in the position to really be able to help you. That's right. He says, so Peter says, so in all of that, Peter just skipped right over that love part. Peter just skipped right over that commandment that was going to help him. And he goes, wait, Lord, where are you going? <laughs> Peter, all Peter heard was I'm leaving. Now think about how much the disciples relied on his presence. They relied yeah. on his presence every day. They think caught fish by his presence. They ate lunch by his presence. They paid their taxes because he was there. Their, their relatives and family were healed because he was there. 
Their everyday existence was impacted by his physical presence. He was everything to them. He taught them. He helped them. He showed them. He, you know, they relied on his physical presence. And so when he said, I'm not going to be with you and you can't come, Peter said, wait, where are you going? Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. So he's, he's leading Peter along, but Peter can't get that idea out of his head. Wait, well, that would why be can't I come now, Lord? Quite a blow. <laughs> it is a blow. I'm ready to die for you. Peter says, Lord, why can't I come now? He's saying, I'm ready. I'm ready to go now. I am ready to die for you. Jesus says, die for me? I tell you the truth, Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Now, I am sure that Peter thought, no, no, this time, Lord, you've never, missed it. Never, I would never do that. I would never that. do that. But I love the heart of Jesus that diagnosed Peter in one breath and gave him the answer in the next. Diagnosed where his feelings were showing what was going on inside his soul, diagnosed where Peter was on the inside, maturity-wise, but then on the other hand, had compassion and took care of his emotions and his feelings and set his mind at ease, or at least he was, he was endeavoring to set Peter's mind at ease because he said to him, Peter, you're going to really mess up and you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. And he says, but don't let your heart be troubled. He's, he's calming them. He's bringing them peace. Look, guys, don't get upset about this. Trust in God. Trust also in me. It's going to be okay. So I say that to you with the words of Jesus. Yeah. Don't let your heart be troubled, no matter what's going on. No matter how it looks like you're on shaky ground. You couldn't have felt any more shaky than Peter did in this moment. And yet, Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. Mm -hmm. There is more than enough room in my father's home. In other words, I am prepared. I am preparing you a place. There's going to be plenty of room for you. You are not going to be left out. There is more than enough room. If this wasn't the truth, I would have told you. Would I have told you I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I'm going. Now, they could have said, well, if you say so, Lord. <laughs> but Thomas, so we have Peter. I wrote these down about these guys. Judas betrayed Jesus, had a heart to betray Jesus. Peter, blind trust, but Peter had a place in him that was so about his, his abilities and his flesh that he had a hard time listening to Jesus and believing what Jesus said about him. Um, I think we find out later, I don't know if I have time to get into this, but I believe we find out later in the word that Peter had a lot of shame. There were, I believe Peter denied Jesus because of shame. And maybe I'll get to that. Maybe I won't. You'll have to ask the Lord about it if I don't. But anyway, but what Peter did have was a blind trust in Jesus. When, G when he heard Jesus, when he could quit thinking about his circumstances long enough to hear what Jesus was saying, he blindly followed him. But in, whether he was walking on the water, he began to look at the circumstances. One of the things that Peter's, the, his books in the Bible teach us, don't lean on the arm of your flesh. That was definitely the lesson, his life lesson that he learned. Don't rely on yourself, rely on Jesus. So he was still in the process of learning this. And then you have Thomas. So Tom, Jesus says, you know the way to where I'm going. But Thomas says, no, we don't know, Lord. We have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? How can you even imagine saying that to Jesus? If Jesus said, which he's already told us in chapter 12, he says, the things I say is what the Father tells me to say. And I say it the way he tells me to say it. And I say whatever he tells me to say. And so he's told them that numerous times. John 5, 30, he says it. Well, Thomas doesn't have a great reputation. No. He's he is known as a doubter. 
Thomas. And he doubts here what Jesus says about him. That's a key for us. We cannot read these words. I'm not going to be a doubter. And you know, James tells us that to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Mm -hmm. And it says, and it, it talks about being like a man that looks in a mirror and then walks away and forgets what he's like. We need to look in the mirror of this word and what Jesus says about us, we need to let go down in our heart. Thomas would not let things in his heart. Peter would let them in. Once he heard them, he let them in his heart and he would believe what Jesus said. But Thomas would not receive what Jesus said and he would doubt what Jesus said. So those words that Jesus spoke did not go in his heart. But Jesus told him something that we need to pay attention to. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. The way. The He's truth, it. The life. G P Thomas said, we don't know. We don't know where you're going. We don't know how to get there. But Jesus said, you know the way. You know why they knew the way? Because they knew Jesus. Whatever yeah. you're in today, you know the way out. That's right. And you might think, if you think this, then you're like Thomas. So I'm not judging you, but judge yourself. If I said that and you think, no, I don't literally know what to do. I don't know the way out of this mess. It seems like I am in a place and there's no answer. Well, you know, the children of Israel were in a place. Enemy was coming behind them. The sea in front of them, nowhere to go. But the Bible says he made a way where there was no way. And he split the sea and they walked across on dry ground. So there is a way and you know it because Jesus says to Thomas, you know the way. When Thomas said, no, we don't, he said, but you know me. And if you know Jesus, then you know the way out. And the scripture says, ask for wisdom and God gives it liberally. Yes. And he doesn't fuss at you when he gives it to no, you. No, he's not there to fuss at Such us. Such a deal. He got, says he upbraideth not. He's there to Ask give us the wisdom. answers. Yes. And Jesus is right there in your situation for today and tomorrow and to the end. Hallelujah. He says, I am the way. That's what he's saying. You know me. I'm the way. I'm the truth. Jesus is the way and God gives us the wisdom to walk in it. And he says, and he's the life. He's the life, the power, the ability, everything we need. He is the life. So what he's what, what he's directing the disciples to is this not everyday physical presence. I see you, Jesus, and I'm counting on you to make my decisions for me. It's going to go from that to using your faith for the presence of God. They're going to have to trust yes, that right. the Holy Spirit is present. But Jesus says, first of all, you've got each other. And then he begins to tell them, I'm sending you a comforter. I'm sending you another just like me. And he's going to tell you everything I all want you to know. Truth. Everything, the truth, all the truth. He's going to tell it to you. So he is shifting them. Well, I believe right now we're in some shifting things and we're really learning a lot right now. But we've got to be listening and we've got to believe every single word he says. He says to, to them, if you had really known me, you would know who my father is. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. In other words, Jesus says, you need to put this in your thinking. Philip says, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. So now we have Peter who's never satisfied enough to trust Jesus. I want to see more and then I'll trust you. We don't want to be a believer like that in these days. We want to trust Amen. and then we'll see. Like you get the fruit when you abide and you trust, not you get the fruit, so you abide and you trust. We make a decision with our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions that I trust you, Lord. And Jesus' response to that was, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Or you still don't trust me? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus is like, how can I show you the Father any more than I already have? And whatever you're asking Jesus to see, and then you're going to trust him, just judge yourself about that and say, Lord, I repent of that. I see your word. I see who you are. You are the way. You are the truth. And you are the life. And you are in me. And I believe in you. Praise I believe God. in what you say. 
says the words I speak are not my own, but my father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the father and the father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you've seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone, me and you included, who believes in me will do the same works that I've done and even greater works because I'm going to be with my father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son can bring glory to the father. Ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So Praise he repeated God. it. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to promise the Holy Spirit. He says, I won't abandon you as orphans. Yes, I'm not gonna be here in the flesh, but I'm not leaving you. It's gonna even be better, he said. You, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. And he was saying that to us too. You will see me. Verse 21 says, those who accept my commands and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them and I will love them and will reveal myself to each of them. He said he will reveal himself to us. Those, so that's where we trust and we take and we believe him and we receive him and we see him and we say it, Lord, I see you. I see you in my brother. I see you here. And we become, it's up to us. They had to become aware of his presence in a new form. We have to become aware of that same presence by faith because his presence is here. He says, I am leaving you with a gift. He had just told them about the Holy Spirit who will teach you everything and remind you of everything I've told you. And everything he's telling us now, the Holy Spirit is bringing to us peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be looking there. And don't be troubled, he says. And don't be afraid. Praise we have God. the gift of the Holy Spirit and in his presence. Oh, yeah. In these next few days, we're really going to talk about his presence, the the Spirit of the Lord, Jesus, His presence in our lives. Praise God. Kelly and I'll be right back. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Be sure to get the notes at kcm.org notes. And remember, Jesus is Lord.